What's up guys, Joe here. I'm here today to bring you an announcement. Football is coming home. But aside from that, the Tour de France continues. Stage nine, heads to teen, and we have over four and a half thousand meters of climbing today. The Col de Pre, really difficult climb. And then we finish atop the Monte de Teen, over 20K, that final ascent. It's going to be massive. Away we go then, and we have quite shocking race days, I must say, early on here. I think it would be good to try and get some riders in the breakaway nonetheless. Maybe Comrade on a minus two, I still think he could be worthwhile. Postal Burger as well, so let's just try and follow some moves. So we are on the first climb of the day. I am trying to move up the road with a couple of guys. Postal Burger and Comrade are the main riders, but again, we have teams chasing us down left, right and centre, and I just don't know why. Okay, so the breakaway has gone here. We have three riders and two from our team, Comrade, Postal Burger and Thomas de Ghent. I don't quite know what's going on with this breakaway. Again, it's Yumbo Visma setting up shop on the front of the race here, just to control things, really ruining our breakaway chances. And by the way, the alien that is Tade Pagacha, the man is unreal. I have given him a bit of a little stat boost up to 83 Mountain, just to make this race a little harder for us. Very strange race taking place right now. Yumbo Visma on the front, not really pacing. And now we have two riders at the front as Postal Burger is caught, maybe Comrade could move into that KOM jersey currently worn by Wilco today. Here we go then, it's Comrade versus De Ghent. Is he going to try and come round? He is, he is. Let's try and beat Thomas De Ghent here with Comrade and we are going to be strong enough to beat the Belgian man. He doesn't dare try and attack us after that little show of strength by us. And I think we do get 10 points there actually, we do indeed. So Patrick Comrade and Thomas De Ghent actually now have a massive lead up the road. Postelberger still between the two groups. They have almost six minutes to Comrade and De Ghent at the front of this race. I just, this is such a strange stage. This has not turned out how I expected. I expected at least 15 riders or so to join this breakaway. So again, it will be De Ghent versus Comrade this time at the top of the Col de Pre. It seems De Ghent has recovered pretty well here because He's holding on much better than he did at the first climb, but Comrade, I do think, will take the points yet again, which should, I believe, put him in the provisional lead of this competition. And still, Postelberger, by the way, hasn't been caught between the two groups. What on earth? However, we have some action finally. We have a split in the group firstly, and we do actually have an attack. Valverde, Asgreen, and Vanderpool attack up the road ahead of the next KOM. I think they attacked over the top of the last climb, trying to grab some KOM points of their own. Again, this stage has been the battle of Comrade versus De Ghent so far. I will try and follow him again. Actually, we'll try and launch our own attack on the right-hand side of the road. Left-hand side with Patrick Comrade. Are we gonna have enough here versus Thomas De Ghent? Just about again, second cat climb this time around. We need to sit up. Still, by the way, six minutes. Valverde has gone solo right now. And finally, this race is opening up. So the main peloton crossed the penultimate climb of the day. 42 riders are here. Up the road, we do have attacks again. Valverde and Mike Woods this time. And they're still six minutes behind the main little duo at the front. And look at this. From the foot of the Monte team is Julian Alaphilippe attacking. Four minutes down in GC. I know he's 18 minutes down or something in real life. We need to be very aware right now. Maybe lay down the tempo up front or... Comrade can, of course, drop back to help out Wilco later on because he's not on a great day, Comrade. Only three minutes is to leave right now, so I feel like that could be the best option rather than trying to go for the stage. So 18 kids go. I have decided to really all but sit up with Patrick Comrade. We'll drop this to 62. The peloton are steaming along right now. It's not going to be a breakaway win today. A uh, An unlikely breakaway win as well. Postal Burger is done, but we can sit up a little bit. And we're looking pretty good for now, I must say. So Simon Yates is the next man to launch. Edith Skelling is going to be done pretty swiftly. But look at this timing from Patrick Conrad. He is going to be able to drop back in perfectly to protect Wilco Kelderman after the Dutchman is done, but it is Alaphilippe, Fusang, and Yates who have gone ham right now on the Monte de Teen. Not my job to close down, and I'm not going to do it. And so that means Miguel Angel Lopez attacks as well. I think Alaphilippe is the most dangerous in GC here. He is four minutes down. We are only two minutes down, so I really feel like this isn't our job for the moment, and now Formula comes to the front. Okay, so they have a very slender lead, the guys at the road, and I must say, we are struggling a little here with Wilco. We're not looking too great today. Comrade looking pretty good. De Ghent is just up the road, and this is all coming back together. We still have over 30 riders. 
And that does mean Richard Carapaz is going to launch his attack right here. Naira Quintana as well. We have Godzu. Look at this block. Look at this block. Cannot get to the front of this group. But it is Carapaz, the only man able to go clear for now. And here comes Tade. Here comes Tade coming to the front of the race. Not deciding to attack just yet, though. And I really feel like this is going to be explosive in the final because hasn't been too fast today. So we have just 4K to go. There goes Tade Pogaccia. He launches his move, the unstoppable man right now in real life and surely in this game as well Wilco has to press it to the line there goes Primoz Roglic I'll try and follow I'll try and follow the Slovenian duo here with Wilco Kelderman we're not looking too bad to be fair we can maybe use that gel as well can I hold the wheel of Primoz Roglic to the top of this climb that's the goal we have to stay here with these two if we want a chance of winning this Tour de France and we're the only rider able to follow Roglic but Pogaccio looks different level so we are pretty cooked here with Wilco I will take the wheel of Primoz Roglic try and take advantage of his yellow jersey status he has to try and hunt Tadej Pogaccio this has been a great stage for us so far today there goes Roglic can we sprint for seconds I don't know but Pogaccio is going to win by a very slim margin what a comeback by Roglic there we get a excellent third place here Carapaz is fourth and you can see the rest of the GC guys all over the roads. Well, 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 we actually were gapped very slightly by Primoz in the end there, only losing five seconds to Tade. Nonetheless, really strong stage by Wilco showing he is the man trying to take it to the Slovenians in this save. And you can see it is Roglic still in the lead of the race. Pogaccio one and a half minutes down, we're two minutes down, and Rigo is now four minutes down in fourth place. So really happy with kind of the first phase of this Tour de France. Of course, the rest day coming up. We have the Polkadot jersey with Comrade now. We have the green jersey as well with Sagan and a podium place in the GC. And coming up after the first rest day, we do have another chance for the sprinters heading to Valence. And Mark Cavendish, in real life, will be hunting his 33rd win at the Tour de France. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you guys are too. And if you are, make sure you smash that like button. Drop a sub as well if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one.